Hey there, Salt Junkies. My name is Maverick. I'm a professional aquarist at a custom aquarium company called Magnificent Aquariums, and I take care of tanks like these. And today, I'm going to show you how to set up your very first saltwater reef aquarium. But before we do that, I want to share my credentials a little bit. So I've been a professional aquarist for just under two years and in the hobby my entire life. I also worked on the Kansas City Public Aquarium as a life support specialist with one of the best filtration companies in the world known as Aquatic Exhibits International. So it's safe to say I know a thing or two about saltwater ecosystems. Now let's jump right into the video. So the first thing you want to think about is the location. Will your aquarium be near a window? If so, does it have blinds to avoid excess algae growth? My water box 25 peninsula here is set up near my bedroom window. However, I do have blackout curtains to control the sunlight if it hits my tank. Uh, next thing you is often overlooked is protecting your floors. So salt water corrodes literally everything and I highly recommend placing down a tarp or a moving blanket of some sort to protect your floors against salt water. Now if your floors are ruined uh, by transporting salt water, you're not going to be in the hobby very long. So please don't overlook this step. Last time to take out your new tank materials or use as well as water test your new aquarium, check for leaks and not waste any precious salt water. Rinse everything you can as oftentimes the tank and parts from the manufacturer have a plasticky smell that I just prefer to remove before adding salt water. Um, especially rinse the carbon bag if you have one, it's not required to set up a reef tank, uh, but definitely rinse the carbon bag until the water beneath it isn't black any longer. So let's cover filtration. Now there are three types of filtration in a saltwater aquarium, mechanical, chemical, and biological filtration. Mechanical filtration is stuff like a filter sock or filter sponge that mechanically moves particulates and contaminants out of the water through, well, going water passing through a sock or some kind of mechanical thing that is going to remove them and you take it out and wash it and remove it that way. Now there is chemical which targets contaminants at a chemical level like carbon, GFO, or a UV sterilizer. You don't need any of these when starting a reefs tank so don't worry about this if you don't have it. In fact, if you do have a UV sterilizer, I'd recommend against using it when starting a tank as it will kill all the beneficial bacteria when you're first cycling. And lastly, and arguably the most important, is biological. This refers to a refugium and the beneficial bacteria that start the nitrogen cycle in the tank. Now this can be a little bit tricky if you don't understand and you've never cycled a saltwater tank before, but don't worry, I'll cover it later in the video. So now that we've rinsed out all of our new or used equipment, it's time to add to sand. So I'm using Carib Sea Live Aragonite Sand. Uh, it's Caribbean reef sand. So it's packed actually in salt water and it's teeming with live beneficial bacteria. This is gonna help start your tank cycle and kick off the nitrogen cycle. Now I definitely would suggest using live sand only and try to aim for one to two inches of sand depth. Um, don't go for fine sand because it can be blown around easily by your return pump or your power heads and it's just gonna be cause headaches down the road and trust me it's not worth it just get a thicker crushed coral or a thicker grade sand so you don't have to worry about that problem. Now one bag of 20 pound sand should be plenty for a tank 30 gallons and under. Um, I personally like to use my hand to smooth it out. I find that it gives the sand bed a little bit more of a natural look but you can use scaping tools as well to smooth it out. Now that the sand is in it's time to add a rock. So there are two types of rock you can add either live rock from your local fish store which is cultured with beneficial bacteria already or dry rock. Now they are practically the same except for the live rock already contains culture bacteria so it will cycle your tank a bit faster. Now I'm going to be using a mix of live and dry rock from all around the world. Luckily the company I work for has plenty and typically the stuff that comes straight from the ocean is more expensive because they aren't collecting it anymore in most parts of the world so it is more expensive um, and most of the stuff that is currently on the market is all that remains in supply kind of like Bitcoin. Now, I trust our reef system, but if you're, wor if you're buying live rock from a local fish store, I would use uh, coral dip on the rock. Uh, yes, it could kill some beneficial bacteria, but it's unlikely and it will remove unwanted pests that will make you want to pull your hair out down the road. If you don't want to dip your live rock, just inspect it for pests like flatworms and bristle worms and scrape them off. As far as scaping your tank, this is your time to be creative and make the tank unique to how you like it. It's your tank, so really... Do something that inspires you. Do something that's going to make you want to keep going back to it. Do something that you're going to want to look at every day. It's no one else's. Only try to please yourself with this. This is really important. I find it best to throw some larger pieces in first to be the base and orient them in a way that you find pleasing. 
Now, I'm not using any coral putty or glue to lock it in place as natural live rock and the man-made stuff can be stacked in a way to lock in place like a puzzle. But if you're worried about your rock falling, by all means, go ahead and secure it with coral putty and glue. It's certainly not going to hurt anything. Okay, now it's time to fill the tank with salt water. I have used I have to use a one-inch hose for this 25-gallon tank as it's all I have to do water changes since I usually use this hose to do water changes on li larger client systems. So I stuck a sock and a plastic bag to try to minimize the cloudiness it will cause, but this didn't really work out for me <laughs> because it was just so much water pouring out at once, it just mucked everything up. So let's cover the three key elements to starting your first reef tank. Water, cycling, and lighting. So water. When it comes to water, there are two choices you can go with ocean or mixed salt water. There are positives and negatives to each, but I'll be using ocean water in my tank. Now, ocean water may be only available to those near an ocean, duh, and can be inconsistent <laughs> depending on the source of the water and weather. Uh, it is also best to have it mechanically filtered and UV sterilized. Now, my ocean water is from Florida and it is canister filtered and UV to prevent excess partic particles and particulates and potentially bad bacteria from entering my system. If you are using ocean water from your local fish store, then I highly suggest asking them how the water is filtered to make sure that you don't have those inconsistencies. So the benefit of ocean water, in my experience, is that you don't have to dose trace elements as long as you're doing regular water changes with ocean water. Now, obviously you'll still need to replenish magnesium, calcium, and alkalinity as your corals will use this at a high rate. But that is much simpler than trying to chase down every single element. Now, ocean water contains every single element from the periodic table in one drop. And that is very hard to replicate uh, in mixed water, even with some of the best dosing systems in the entire world. Now, the benefits of making your own water is that you don't have to drive to a local fish store. You just mix salt with water and it'll save you time. Now, to, do, to mix your own uh, water, you will need to set up an RODI filter, which will remove chlorines, chloramines, toxic heavy metals, and will bring the total dissolved solvents, or TDS, to zero. Now, ensuring that your basis of H2O is pure as possible. This is another benefit over ocean water. RODI water, or mixed salt water, is more consistent. So you then have to add the reef salt accordingly, and you want to aim for a salinity level of 1.025. Now, plus or minus 0.01 is fine, but try to aim for that magic 1.025 number. If you're going to keep... Uh, LPS or SPS corals, you will most likely need to dose trace elements into the tank. But overall, both methods work wonders and we have successfully kept beautiful reef tanks with all types of corals with both water types. However, clear ocean water reduces maintenance in my experience since you don't have to dose trace elements. Um, if you're nervous about making your own salt water, don't be. Uh, the RODI system is super easy to install and all you need to do is mix the reef salt in the right amount and put it in a bucket or a tub and test the salinity. Now, I recommend you use Aquaforest for reef salt as we run many amazing reef tanks with their products. So it's time to talk about the nitrogen cycle. So there are two ways that I'd recommend that you cycle your fish tank, so your reef tank. The first is the fish in and fish list cycle. So both involve a bottled beneficial bacteria product. Now there are many products on the market that work well but in my experience, Turbo Start by Fritzheim is by far the most effective and really works as advertised. Now, when you add the beneficial bacteria into your aquarium, you will need to feed it. So what does it eat? Well, the beneficial bacteria feeds off ammonia chloride, which can be sourced from fish pee and poop, or you can use a bottled product. Dr. Tim's ammonia chloride works awesome, but there are as well many products just like this. Uh, if you're going to be doing a fish in cycle, most likely a pair of clownfish since they typically can tolerate higher levels of ammonia and plus who doesn't want Nemo? Uh, it is paramount that you are testing for ammonia to ensure that the bacteria is eating the ammonia in the water since it is extremely toxic to the fish. Test your water every day or use Ammonia Alert by Seachem which will tell you if your ammonia levels get too high. If your ammonia level spikes over 0.5 parts per million, you need to do a water change to keep your fish from suffering. Uh, I did a fish in cycle with a Royal Grama, and since I have test kits and ample seawater available to me, I really wasn't worried about the ammonia level spiking. But um, because I swear by Fritz I number nine, the reason I do is because I have the Seachem ammonia alert in my tank already, 
and the level never went above 0 0.02 in parts per million, which is the safe level and is fine. Now, how do you know when your tank is cycled? Well, the ammonia will spike initially. Obviously, if you're adding the product, it's going to initially spike because you're adding ammonia into the tank. Uh, and then go down as the beneficial bacteria consumes it, and then nitrate will spike. Nitrite, I'm sorry, will spike as well, and then go back down. Now, if you're using a fishless cycle and add fish, it is normal for the ammonia to spike slightly as you're adding more food, more ammonia than the bacteria can initially consume. But this level should go back down within a few days, and I wouldn't really worry about it too much. But it should level out quickly. But it's best to test your ammonia whenever adding your first fish. Okay, now let's talk about lighting. Now for lighting, I went with the Kessel A360X Tuna Blue since it has brilliant shimmer and offers good par and will be everything I need for this tank to grow all types of coral. Now I put a little shade on it just because when I look at it, before I put the shade on it, it was kind of blinding me a little bit, but the shade fixed that. It's from Unreef. I'll leave a description below if you guys happen to have a Kessel light. But you'll be fine with any of the big brands, AI, Ecotec, Kessel, etc. Uh, but the main source of a coral's nutrients is lighting, uh, and I would recommend spending the money on a solid light that will save your wallet and mental health in the future. Uh, I'd recommend the AI Prime 16 HD as it is perfect for nano tanks and is a good blend of price and effectiveness. Plus it looks nice and comes with a controllable app to set your schedule. Speaking of schedule, you can cycle your tank with or without light. Consider you don't have any corals in the tank. If you must add corals right away, only use hardy soft corals. Turn your lights on for six to eight hours until the cycle is complete. If you don't have corals, I'd recommend not using your lights at all until your tank is cycled to avoid any unnecessary outbreaks of algae. But to be honest, either way is fine. If you are doing a fish in cycle, don't worry about the light as they don't need light uh, to survive like corals. Ambient lighting will be enough for them until the tank is cycled. Now soft corals don't care if a tank is cycled or not in my experience. Um, but LPS and SPS corals do. So avoid those for at least a month until the tank can be uh, successfully cycled and they're not affected by new tank syndrome. Now, once the tank is cycled, set your schedule between eight to 10 hours. I usually go with nine um, and have a period of ramping up and a period of ramping down with full intensity around 65% for six hours or so. But lighting can be different with different lights so and different tanks, so adjust accordingly. I won't speak about PAR and light spectrum as this can be an entire entire video in and of itself, but stay tuned. But for most reefers, the schedule templates that comes with the big light brand should do the trick just fine. And you want to aim for around 8 inches above the surface level if you're going to use these uh, selected schedules, these pre-made schedules. If you made it to this point in the video, congratulations, you are on your way to setting up a beautiful and successful reef tank. This was my first YouTube video ever, long form video at least, so it means a lot to whoever has stuck around this long and I promise my camera and editing skills will get better with time, so just bear with me. Uh, I plan to bring so much awesome content in the future, including amazing custom aquarium tours and updates on this one. So look for a new video every Tuesday morning, Tuesday or Wednesday around 9 a.m. So good luck with your new tank and leave any questions or comments down below and like and subscribe if you felt I made this process a little easier for you. So keep testing your water and Maverick out.